All right, how's it going, everyone? Uh, I don't really know how to do an intro for this kind of video, but I'm here <laughs> with, uh, you could hear him already, my boy Smugstick. We've done we've done some collabs before. I'm sure you all know him anyways. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> hey, everyone. Yeah, Smugstick. Uh, we did a Vegito one, we did a Goku one, and now we're doing something completely different. So... Today we're going to be discussing like just differences between Goku and Vegeta. He's going to have the Goku side in his channel. I obviously have the Vegeta side. Here you're watching it. Uh, we're going to just talk about the characters overall, what we think about them, what we think can improve, or just like general opinions about weird things like fighting styles, their outfits, how we think their development is, stuff like that. It's just an overall view of them. So in terms of Vegeta's backstory, is there like anything that stands out to you about it that you like or you think is like a really unique aspect to him? Uh, well, Vegeta is one of the only characters that has uh, this like little story that was published when the show was still airing. Uh, Piccolo has one, Vegeta has one, and I think some other character has one, I don't remember who. And it tells you a little bit about him growing up and serving under Frieza, and it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, of course, it's not canon or anything like that, but besides that, I really like the stuff with Beerus in Battle of Gods, him watching his father be stepped on and stuff like that. I think that's really interesting and it really gives a little more context to the character. Yeah, I really like uh, how he ties in like, with the lore, like not just obviously the fights that he's in and the different arcs that he's involved in, but he's tied in so much to the history of the series with like the Frieza Force, the Saiyan army, Planet Vegeta, literally like he's, he's in the name. So <laughs> you have him <laughs> tied into not only stuff that's current, but stuff that's in the past. He's a very like... Um, not omniscient, but like kind of omniscient because he's like so much involved in everything, you know? Like, I, I think that's a, like a cool part of him because he's very unique in that sense that he goes back so far. Really mm -hmm. only like, I guess, obviously Frieza and then Piccolo, but that's really King Piccolo, if anything, that goes back so far and K King Piccolo stops at a certain point. So Vegeta's really right. so far ahead of everyone in terms of that. And in terms of his development, because that's the next point, smooth transition right there. Uh, we got, so for his development, I think he's definitely, I mean, I'm biased, Piccolo is my favorite, but Vegeta's probably a close second in terms of development, because he's one of the best developed characters in the series, at least for Z. I, I don't necessarily like how he's handled in Super, and GT's kind of like, uh, it's, it's not bad, it's just like, not as good as he is in Z in terms of development, right. but he has some See, really great development, yeah. See, um, I, I'm the opposite, because I actually don't like Vegeta that much, he's... Far from my favorite character, but I do. He's all right. I hate, um, I hate Super I Vegeta, if we're being honest. Right. Super Vegeta is <laughs> awful. But uh, personally, I do think his development is, given the praise that it deserves, I think it's pretty good, especially for what Toriyama was doing at the time. Um, it's, you know, he doesn't plan too much ahead. He was supposed to be a one shot villain kind of thing. So it's pretty cool that he evolved into this massive character, the second most important character in the franchise. It's super cool to see, and I think that's reflected in something where we're going to talk about, those the outfits, because he starts off full Saiyan armor, pads, um, leg thingies, and slowly over the course of the series, you see, you see him lose parts of the outfit. Uh, first is the shoulder pads, then, you know, he just has the, the Boma made armor, then he just loses that, he only has the blue stuff, the blue under stuff. And then he, at the end of Z, he's just wearing a casual clothing. He's pretty much accepted himself as a human being as well. Yeah, besides, I mean, like, Gohan's really the only other person that you could see the development through their design. Like, it's just something, you, you think it's, like, something so simple, but you could see how much he's changed. Like you said, he's accepted his Earthling ways by the end of uh, Dragon Ball Z, and you see him go from the Saiyan armor to, like, his normal fighting clothes that he has, like, in the Buu Saga. I wish he kept those. He, they, he had them on in the Broly movie. I don't know why they didn't keep that. That's like one of my favorite outfits yeah, of his. Super cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, in terms of development, like I said, I think he's like probably my second favorite in terms of that. Like he overall, he's not. I'm not like insanely fond of him, but I could see why people love him so much, and because he's such an important part of the series. But yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, their outfits too. Uh, I already gave it away. My favorite outfit is his Boo Saga <laughs> one. Um, I think. The Busaga one is one of my favorites for sure, but I'm actually really uh I know you I love really, the Busaga really like too. The, yeah, but <laughs> I also really like his um his jacket one from the end of Z where Oh yeah, yeah. I like how he's really short there. 
when uh when he's drawn yeah. in uh that last few chapters of the manga like toriyama draws him really short for some reason i think that's kind of funny yeah. like he's literally, he's literally like a, a troll doll at that point like everyone jokes about the hair but like now he has the height too but yeah um that, that's a good pick i in, in terms of his current outfit i mean it's it's okay i preferred it in the android saga but it's kind of like overstayed its welcome i wish we'd have yeah. like in the Broly movie he had that boo saga on temporarily but i guess that's besides the point they're obviously going to just keep him in that same armor <laughs> for the rest of well, yeah. super whatever it seems like it's just his most iconic one what do you think of the Whis outfit one because a lot of people have different opinions about those okay so in the terms of the Whis outfit um see i'm i'm a little torn in that i used to not like them but i've slowly warmed up to them um i i like the fact that it's at least unique now and in the super style like i liked his android saga outfit but in the dragon ball super style like outside of the broly movie i don't really like how it looks because he's so shiny and the mm -hmm. the, the weiss outfit i mean he's still shiny but yamamura's style uh, i probably just i'm not good with japanese names but I, I probably just butchered the pronunciation of his name but you guys know who i mean uh his his like style and his direction in terms of making vegeta so shiny it doesn't look that good in his android sog outfit but um yeah. his Whis outfit I, I do like better than his current one i agree i think especially uh with super saiyan blue the having so much blue on vegeta is a little i don't know oh i just don't God. like it very much especially blue so evolution yeah think... that's like that looks so terrible <laughs> that. oh my god yeah especially <laughs> blue evolution. oh I so you hate like... it too yeah no it's, i think it's awful <laughs> Good. But uh, <laughs> I don't like Vegeta's Whis outfit as much as I do Goku's. But I do, I do, I do like the fact that they at least changed it at some point. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad it's at least different, and I do prefer Goku's over it because it looks more fighting like. And Vegeta, Vegeta's is like, it's like a kind of weird. It looks like Kevlar kind of. It looks like he has like a bulletproof vest on underneath. Yeah, it looks heavy. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. And I'm like. It's it's like at least it looks unique, but it just it looks weird sometimes. But it, it's still I like it better than him having so much blue on him, especially because Blue Evolution is almost the same shade as his like blue under like yeah. his, his shirt and pants and whatever. And it doesn't it kind of like not clashes. It just looks weird. Mm -hmm. It's like a jumpsuit. Yeah, I can agree with that. <laughs> um, next next point is uh GT or Super. Do you prefer? I I, I know which one you're gonna say. And you guys <laughs> probably know which one I'm going to say, too. So, GT or Super Vegeta? Um, GT Vegeta by a long shot. Yep. To a degree. <laughs> um, especially, I don't like GT Vegeta's design. At oh, like yeah. At all. But I think he's, his uh, character is more in line with what he's, what I feel like he would be. Especially, you know, and I love Baby Vegeta. I think a lot of people know that I love Baby Baby's Vegeta. Baby's like my favorite. I mean, I'm, it's like everyone's favorite arc of GT. I love that arc so much. And right, then Super exactly. did like a very crappy off-brand version of it with the Coffee Vegeta stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I always forget about that, um, as it should be forgotten. But yeah, I pretty much agree. His outfit is better in Super. I like his design better in there. And, but in terms of development, I mean, or not really development, just in terms of, like, his character, how being in character, he's way more in character in GT, and, like, in Super, it's, like, he has some really odd moments where he, not, not like, regresses, but it's almost like it's the same plot points over and over that we don't really need, or he's just reliving parts from exactly. Z. Like, yo, do you guys remember when he blew himself up against Boo? Yeah, Watch when him they do that did that Topo. again, I was like, oh my god. Like, I liked his fight against Topo, but then they're like, oh, guys... You remember the final explosion? I mean, everyone knows. And they even had, like, a flashback to it. They even showed yeah. the scene again. It's like, oh, he's doing that thing he used against Boo. And I'm like, really? Wow. I didn't notice. But <laughs> and it's really weird because it's like, homie, it's 45 minutes and you have, like, three other contestants still around. You really don't have to kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and we know he wasn't going to die. They're not just going to kill Vegeta off. And then it's like, oh, yeah, gosh, right. he survived. He's strong enough this time for it. There's... I mean, Which doesn't make sense, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Because literally the whole point of that thing is like, you're killing yourself, you're blowing yourself yeah. up. And then he's like, I mean, I guess 17 did survive it too, so we, we saw that twice. <laughs> so it wasn't yeah. even, it wasn't like unique to that arc either. <laughs> At least 17's was cool about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but one thing I do like about Super Vegeta 
is uh, Ryo Horikawa is still bringing the bag. I oh think my god, man he's do it. an amazing voice actor, dude. Like he's definitely one of my favorites, up there with like Ben Shimada and um, yeah, uh, who else am I thinking of? Um, Frieza's voice actor in the I'm, I'm mm-hmm. like having a mind fart on his name. I yeah, the names too. But, but yeah, um, definitely. In, in respect to Chris Sabat too, I'm not Chris a big fan of English yeah. though, but I think he's pretty good too. Chris Sabat, um, I mean, I love his voices. Uh, there, there is like, like Vegeta is like uh, one of my favorite characters of his because he he's in like every dub of every show. You'll see him at yeah. least once. But yeah, both both versions of him, I love his voice acting, and he does um, in, in the more arc so far, I, I people have been torn on it, but I do like how he's trying to somewhat repent for what he did on Namek. So I'll give Super that. That's I, right, yeah. I really like that plot point of him. Like, I mean, he's already, like, obviously he's kind of repentant for stuff. People have, like, discussed, I see people talk about it, like, on Twitter all the time and whatever. But I, I like it, like, because he feels bad. Like, it shows, like, he feels remorse of, like, oh, he slaughtered all these people on Namek and he wants to bring them back somehow and or, like, protect the planet. And I, I, I like that. I do, and I know yeah, some people are torn. That's pretty but cool. I like it. It's definitely something. It's definitely something I never thought that they would bring back to. Like you know, when we write our what ifs, we're like, oh, why can we pull that stuff that people may not think of often and stuff like that. But like him killing the Namekian village is definitely something I just never thought that would ever loop around into a plot point again. Yeah, I definitely agree with that because I go through the same thing when I'm trying to like come up with what ifs. I'm like looking back, like, oh, what has Vegeta done in the past that some people might. Um, that could be a good plot point here and then like you never really see if, they, if they're brought up in super if those past plot points are brought up it's not like in terms of story relevance it's just like oh you guys remember vegeta did this before yeah like with exactly. the final explosion and everything um yeah and then the last point here that we were going to talk about is like they're different the, the differences between goku and vegeta in terms of their fighting style and methods like we're gonna uh I guess give Vegeta some props here and like talk about like the cool aspects of him, like the unique stuff, what we like about him a lot. Um, in terms of his fighting style, I really like because it's kind of a unique plot point. We don't really usually see this, but he's very uh, he's a military strategist. Like they've hammered this in our minds since the beginning. Like ever since he showed up, um, he's a military like expert in terms of his fighting style and like his strategy. And I think that's a really unique thing because we rarely get to see that in Dragon Ball in terms of like a military fighting thing, especially with all the Saiyans dead now. Um, we do have the Frieza Force, but I think Vegeta brings like a really unique aspect to that. Instead of like you got all these martial artists on Earth, and then you got this military guy who's gone around like slaughtering planets, and he has his own ways of doing fights, and it's way more um, well not like every everybody has like their own unique ways, but it's very unique in comparison to a lot of other people. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think uh, it's very cool. Like when in um, in the Namek arc, when he's taking down all the Frieza soldiers one by one. Well, not all of them. You know, the important ones. He starts with Kui, then he goes to Dodoria, then Zarbon, and you know he moves up. It's pretty cool to see him uh, be a little more strategic. And then that arc is just overall more strategic in many ways. Um, yeah, that that arc's also like my favorite too. <laughs> Yeah, it's super cool. So, of, of uh, course, I'm going to say agree with you when I say I love how he was handling that arc. Because you get to mm-hmm. see him acting rogue, too, which is, like, you like you always, usually in Dragon Ball, you have, like, some th- sort of, like, clear-cut villain and then the allies. And Vegeta's obviously a villain there, but it's cool because he's, like, a third party acting on its own rogue. And then eventually he ends up joining the team as, like, an enemy of my enemy situation. And yeah. you get to see, like, that military strategy of him, like, slowly... He's alone, but he's slowly still chipping down Frieza's army, like, by killing one by one, like, whoever's there, like, just showing off his yeah, pure... Yeah, that's super sick. Pure, uh, what, what, what is it, like, his, how awesome Vegeta is, because he, he loves to show off how powerful he is and how he's a Super Saiyan on Namek, and he's stronger than everyone. <laughs> one thing that, um, that I was thinking about is the fact that Vegeta, at least in, in the original manga, he would always get a new attack. Like, yeah. Um, unlike Goku, who only really relies on the Kamehameha and then, like, a few things here and there that he comes up on the fly. Mm-hmm. But Vegeta, Gallic Gun, uh, Dirty Fireworks, Final Flash, Big Bang Attack, um, that thing he does when he's Majin Vegeta, I don't remember the name of, and then uh, Final Explosion, you know, stuff like that. He would always yeah. come up with different ones, always, like, explosion or, like, bright lights themed. 
Yeah, um, it, it's always like space themed, or I you do have like Gallic Gun, which is um, like garlic, but then you have everything yeah. else is like a space theme, which I think that's a pretty cool theme. Like I like, I also um, like this isn't really about Vegeta, but I like how everyone has their own like themes in terms of attacks. Like you got Raditz with Days of the Week, Nappa has like natural disasters, some like somewhat like that. But uh, mm -hmm. Vegeta's is pretty cool. Like he has the space theme to his attacks, and then um, in Super, I mean, what what. Like, he didn't really get anything too new in Super. Like, he got the Gamma Burst Flash, but that's really just a final Flash, like, souped up. But I think that looks cool. That's yeah. that's in the manga, and they only use that in the video games. They never show that in the anime, though, sadly. But it's mm. it's a cool one. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. It's basically us talking about all the cool stuff we like about Vegeta in comparison to Goku. Um, so Smug6 is obviously going to have one on his channel about Goku. You can check out us discussing it there. Be sure to check out his channel too. He's got pretty great content. A lot of it um, is just like mine, so I'm sure all you guys will love it. And yeah, thank you for joining me here, and I hopefully will see you guys over on that channel watching that video. Goodbye. Yes, sir. <laughs> I didn't know how to do a good outro. See you guys.